selling you get in when you play live that's hard to achieve in a studio, chiefly because you can start over. I mean, uh, I'm very uh, well read and influenced by Glenn Gould, you know, who made the opposite decision. You know, he said that he kind of felt like a trained monkey up there, you know, and that if he made a mistake or something, you know, uh, it was somehow uncomfortable or he was betraying the composer. You know, I think the energy of live audience, you know, really is, is, part of, is part of jazz. And, you know, I like doing studio albums too, and I've done a number of them, but um, if I had a choice, I'd rather do live albums, um, or at least half of them be live albums. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's risky either way. I mean, you can't, like, will yourself into being great on a particular day at a particular time. You know, you just have to use your experience and be open to what might happen, surround yourself with, you know, the best sound people you can get and the best musicians and, and the best piano and, and just, you know, try to let it go and don't think about, oh, I'm trying to make history here because as soon as you do that, you're sunk. You know, just step at a time, you know, very much I play this phrase, at least to that phrase, and pretty soon I've got a chorus, you know? Instead of thinking, okay, I wanna be at this place in 64 bars. You know, I can't think like that. I've gotta, it's gotta unfold for me uh, in an organic way. I'm not a heavy perfectionist. You know, to me, I'd always rather take, pick a take that has you know, the real emotional juice or really says something or is more memorable, even if it has a flaw. You know, it's great when it doesn't, but it doesn't define what I do. And if I am worried about making mistakes, then I'm not doing my job, which is creating the music. Since I started out composing for jazz musicians, I generally trust that whoever I give music to is going to kind of do the right thing. They're going to think about it. You know, I give a vague, a metronome marking, a feeling, you know, a few indications here or there. And let them play it for themselves. I don't micromanage uh, my, my notation. And, uh, you know, I think it's important that music you know, be able to be, I guess the word would be hearable. You know, there's a lot of contemporary composition that seems to be written by composers to have other composers analyze them in theory departments in other music schools. And uh, I'm definitely not that. Um, I mean, I can show you the logic of how I put something together, but to me the most important thing is that, you know, uh, you hear it and I'm not afraid of melody at all, and I'm pretty relentlessly tonal. Um, and uh, it's just kind of evolved in a natural way. Teaching is, uh, is very rewarding. And because I learned in the oral tradition from older musicians, I think it's impor particularly important that I try to maybe save somebody a few steps, give, some, give something back. But teaching is, teaching is hard. You know, not everybody who plays well is a good teacher. You know, in the 30 years that I've studied with Sofia Rossoff, I've never seen her sit down on the bench with two hands and play anything. Now she sits across the room, shouldn't even go near the piano, you know, so it's really not necessary to sit down and demonstrate, you know.
better to have the student like try to figure it out for themselves. Because that's what I did. I just completely figured it out for myself. And as I said, dumb luck or circumstance, maybe that's the reason that I sound like me. It's because nobody interfered with me. I didn't take jazz piano lessons. You know, I didn't go through all that kind of nonsense. And so what I play is, is mine. better than feeling like you play at a great set or a great concert. Now knowing that, you know that the next night or the next time you play, you know, the chalkboard gets erased and you start again. And if you get attached to the memory of that great concert you played, you're not going to be able to play the next one. You have to kind of say, oh, that was great. Now I'm going to start fresh. You know, it's nice to be recognized. Um, but, you know, I don't live for awards or critics' polls because you can make yourself nuts. But, you know, the gigs and the music and keeping moving forward and keeping the challenge, continuing to challenge myself, that's really what it's about. And the other goodies, when they come, it's great, but that's not really why I do it. Mm -hmm.